Well, hi everybody, I'm back from the World Pairs in Ireland. What an event that is. Really enjoy that every single year. It's been a little bit tougher this year, unfortunately. However, that's how it can go at times. In the build up to the event, there was like 10 days or so of very heavy rain. All the water levels in all the big locks, including the main lock urn, came up a lot. And that influx of cold water really seemed to affect the fishing. That said, there's still a competition to be won. And when I say affect the fishing, when you consider my lowest weight for the trip was five and a half kilos, which is over 10 pound of silverfish, it's not exactly that bad. So Rob Wooten and I are the team. We're obviously defending champions from last year, which was a really nice thing to go and experience and try and retain that title. Um, the week started off interestingly, I drew on Garadise lot, Garadise place called Connolly's, a pole area to be fair, and I caught a few fish on the feeder early before switching my attention to the pole. I had a lovely day's fishing, really nice stamp roach. Um, you know, I fed some casters, loose fed some casters, caught the fish on the drop, caught a few settled, and I caught 14 and a half kilos, which we you know, that's 30 pound of roach. Really nice day's fishing. Uh, I think 15 kilos won the section. Uh, off the end peg, so I was close, close to that, but no, not uh, unfortunately a winner, but it was still the second best weight down on that lock. So I was very happy with that and gave me a bit of an opinion on what I could expect. There was still some fish caught in the deeper bits, but I already noticed last year I drew on Connolly's and I weighed 20 kilos of skimmers and hybrids on the first day of the foil pairs. There was loads of 10, 12 kilo weights as well. And I really felt like it was fishing well. When this year, Rob was down in the deeper pegs where I draw and he won it quite comfortably with 14 kilos. There was a seven kilos and eight kilos. And you just got that vibe that there wasn't loads of fish feeding. So we'd already sort of got it in our heads that that was how the week might go. It was quite interesting after that. Week started off, uh, you know, up and down. I drew on Bernerke Lake to begin with. Uh, this is a lake that confronts some skimmers. There was actually the match winner, Jens Kosnick, won the practice open match on the Sunday there with 23 kilos. And the upper end of that section is a lot better. Fair play to the organisers. They tweaked the pegging after Sunday and tried to push everybody up to that top end of the section thinking on your feet there, really thought that was good. Um, and as a result, there was a 21 kilos, um, a fantastic performance by uh, Dirk and Michael Buckwalder in my zone had 19 kilos further up. Down where I was, wasn't quite as good. There was some two, three, four kilo weights, uh, an eight kilo and I managed to have nine kilo, 800. So although I felt I was happy with that, um, I just, Felt like I'd lost 10 kilos, which is a lot, you know, 10 kilos on the first day behind such a formidable pairing as uh, Michael Puckwilder and Roddy Scott. That's good. That's difficult to catch up. The following day, uh, I drew on Church Shaw and it was time for a reversal of fortunes. Michael Puckwilder was in the middle of the section and he really struggled. That area was incredibly tough, whereas the top end of the section where I was was a lot better. And I actually managed to win the section with 14 kilos. I caught on the feeder and then of course some fish late on the pole and a feature of the week was starting to begin it was windy the wind was crashing in on our bank all the time uh, so even though my float was there one minute up and down and all the rest of it it was still enjoyable and I managed to catch some fish to, to win the section with 14 kilos so Robert had two in different days really he'd had double figures both days he'd had 12 kilos, good performance at Brackley Lake, and then he'd had uh, 12 kilos at Connolly Shore. He'd had a terrible problem with Pike on, on that time. So we were there or thereabouts. We kind of done all right. Um, a standout performance at this point. Roddy Scott had been on Connolly's uh, at the top end, um, near to where I'd been the day uh, on the practice match and caught 24 kilos on a whip. That outstanding weight more than made up for uh, Michael's bad peg. So... And um, that's all sort of put them again in the driving seat in our rotation. We were doing well, we just weren't the leading pair. So we always had something to work towards. Wednesday, 
Wednesday was, um, I, I, heard, I hear this phrase quite a bit, to be honest. People say, oh, the windiest conditions I've ever fished in. It wasn't the windiest conditions I've ever fished in, but it was the most exposed place I've been on a windy day. Um, it was big, big gusts on the lock. You know, you'd have your rod in front of you and just holding your rod, it would be bent round in the wind. That's how windy it was because you are effectively sitting in the middle of the ocean on, a, on one of the islands. So it was a really rough place to be. Terrible weed in the water, dragging on my line. Um, couldn't really read any bites. And I'll be honest, I had an absolute nightmare. Uh, as did everybody else. We're all battling the conditions. I caught a few fish late on because the wind changed very slightly. The toe dropped, the weed dropped, and all of a sudden you could fish a little bit. And I caught a few hybrids late on. I had seven kilos with 10 kilos winning Horse Island. To put that into perspective, I drew the exact same peg I was on in last year's event, uh, which was peg 11, and I fished 60 meters and caught 26 kilos of roach, small hybrids and some big hybrids late on. I had a fish every single cast in that day, and on this day, I was waiting for bites, and you could just tell the fish weren't feeding, so that was rough. However, Rob had won the match from Enish Favor Island, which meant um, we were looking still up there in the mix. Um, Again, we didn't make anything up on Roddy and Buck, who were in our zone, and the leaders up there we were struggling to keep up with. The, the following day, we went to one of the tougher sections. We went to Lockskur and Horton's Shore at Garadice, and it was tough. I actually came second in the entire county with nine kilos, 400. Um, that was made up of about 300 small fish on the pole. Can't say I overly enjoy catching 300 fish, but it is what I had to do on the day, so that's what I did. Rob was in an incredibly tough bit that had thrown up low weights all week and really suffered there. So we were we were out of the running really um, after that day. That left us with the, the urn to go on the last day. Now, I always think the urn is the most important place to be. So I think going there last day, especially on a cold week, if it had been a warm week with warm weather, I think going there last day could have been interesting. However, the fishing had just got worse and worse every day on the urn. And as a result, that final day was really poor. I had five kilos on peg two. Michael Buckwilder sat on peg one and caught 19 kilos. So I had to watch him catch 19 kilos when the rest of us just caught nothing. Great performance, can't fault in one bit. Really, really good. Um, you know, just felt like there was a few fish there and he did everything amazing to make the most of it. So fair play to him. And the other section, again, Rob, Rob had, had the same as me. I mean, I had five, 600 and Rob had, had six kilos exactly very poor however that was poor all the way through as well so apart from michael's weight it was poor for everybody um and that left us with uh approximately 96 kilos for the week where just to put that into perspective last year on my own i had 113 kilos so you can see a huge difference in the type of fishing that we've experienced this year that we have last year that said 96 kilos that's a lot of fish, that's a lot of silverfish um, in testing conditions. And that left us ninth overall in the pairs, which I was absolutely and utterly delighted with because for me, there is several goals. You set out to win it. If you can't win it, you try to make the top three. And if you can't make the top three, those top 10 frame places are your target because, you know, you can't always win off all the pegs that you're given and you, you're going to have to do some performances. I like to analyse things really carefully. I felt we definitely left some fish in the pegs. We definitely could have got maybe 8 to 10 kilos more on our weight. That said, we still wouldn't have made the top three. So it was probably very difficult to make the top three from our draws, if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, however, the main news, the winners... We stay with Andy Levers and Will Freeman in a four-man lodge at the Killy Everland Hotel. I absolutely and utterly love it there. And they were the winners for 2019. So we've kept it in the lodge, which we were really chuffed about. I've known Andy for nearly all my fishing life. And he is one of the great guys in fishing, a brilliant angler. Um, and he made the most of his week and did really well. Will Freeman 
is part of the England management team. So, uh, so I should be saying all nice things about him, but I fish with Will all the time. You know how great I think he is. I'm sure I've mentioned him in the past. So his brilliance combined with Andy, they did a brilliant job and did fantastically well to win the world pair. So well done to them. Michael Buckwilder and Roddy Scott, absolutely awesome out there. They were second and Adam Wakelin and Felix Sherman were third. So big congratulations to the top three. I absolutely loved my week. Um, I'm always a bit depressed when I come home, the journey home, right down the whole time because you don't want to come home. It's such good fishing. You know, we've had fantastic nights out, went to the Anglers Rest a couple of times. You know, the best food you'll eat anywhere in the world. I just absolutely love it there. Um, you know, just fantastic company all week. And there was a there was a really good spirit talking with people and things that had gone on. There was a few little minor issues regarding the wading. I know that's going to be sorted out for next year. I don't let things like that affect me. I think you can just sit there and fish and enjoy yourself anyway. Love a bit of banter between everybody and it's been good and I do look forward to going next year. Let's talk a little bit about some of the tactics I use. I want to touch on feeders because I know you're all going to ask me what sort of feeders and what sort of gear that I'm using. For me, it's really straightforward, okay? At Preston Innovations, a couple of years ago, I set about, with the team, making some window feeders. And they've come out perfectly. We've got the cage window, and we've got the solid window feeder. They come in four sizes, small, medium, large, and extra large. And for me, they're the two main choice of feeder, to the point where I actually never put another feeder on that particular week because they were doing everything that I needed them to do. They were a really, really good feeder. The cage feeders there, the idea being draw some fish in. I actually fish with the cage feeder a lot, especially when it's difficult. So you can put some bait in it, some ground bait in it, and as it falls through the water, little bits break off. Not loads, because the way the cage is honeycombed, it's perfect. So little tiny bits break off, it draws the fish down and you can catch them. Window feeders work by putting the bait in the inside and capping them off with ground bait. But don't forget, you can put ground bait in as well. So they work in the same effect with ground bait in them as well. The solid feeder is there for when you want to take everything down to the bottom. You know those pegs you chuck out, feeder seems to be falling forever. You don't want your bait to come out on the way down. Change to that solid feeder and they're fantastic. I know all the guys in our lodge were using them. I watched Michael Buckholder use them fantastically well on that last day when he was on them as well. So I understand where they're the choice of feeder. You've got to remember that when you're in Ireland on these big waters, there's no place for light feeders really. I used 45 gram, 60 gram and 75 gram at least three times during the week because you need so much weight. So if you're gonna have big weights, you need proper rods and proper lines to deal with it. 13 uh, two, which is the four meter distance master, that rod came out of the bag every single day, even for fishing 40, 50 meters. You're on a great big water. We know the action on that rod's beautiful, but you can cast those heavy feeders. And then the 12, six superior, they were my two main rods coupled with the O12 absolute braid and a 10 pound shock leader for me that's what the feeder fishing in iron's all about the right robust gear and then you can tackle anything i tend to go with n30 as my first choice of hook i do also like the n20s because i do like a nice open point so i tend to find myself using the n20s when i'm fishing with maggots and i like to switch to the n30s for worms it's just something that i found is a lot better so that's the tackle i'm using it's really straightforward um on the pole all the floats were basically from four twelves all the way up to two gram you have to take some heavier floats with you five six eight elastic depending on the depth you're at and i always like um sort of slim body floats for fishing on the drop like f1 maggots and then some more round body traditional river styley type floats for when i'm fishing on the bottom and bagging up so that was the tackle that i've been using we had a really good week ground bait wise um you know i'm always looking to use uh sony baits ground bait because Again, we've sit, sat down, we've looked at what ground bait we need. 
For me, the new black roach has loads of hemp in it, so I use that a lot during the week, and I basically combine that with the black bream. A friend, actually, a friend of mine put me on the black bream. Um, you know, he said to me, he'd been catching a load of fish on black bream. So I decided to give it a go about three or four months ago, and I'm really, really enjoying that. So what I basically did was, if I felt it was roach and hybrids, I added more of the black roach ground bait, which has got a lot of crushed hemp in it. And then if it was more skimmery type venue, I just aired more towards the black bream. And that was basically the, the combination. Very, very straightforward. Um, I like dark ground baits because the water's clear. And you can have an enjoyable week. So absolutely and utterly loved it. I'd like to say that I'm going to sit down and have a relax, but unfortunately not. It's the Feeder Masters Grand Final um, in approximately 10 days time from when this video was published. So... I'm incredibly excited about that. Not only am I fishing in the event, I'm actually the main organiser of the event, along with Mick and, uh, and Darren Viles, who we're going to team up together and create something special for everybody down there. Doesn't really need it because Tamar is amazing as it is. So once I've managed to get the organising sorted, we're going to think about the fishing. Who will be the Preston Innovations Feeder Masters Champion for 2019? I don't know. I could bet my money on one of about 50 anglers going down there i'm sure so the standard is very very good everybody's probably got a chance of winning i don't know who it's going to be but after i've been down there i'll talk to you guys all about that final because i'm sure you want to hear all about it please don't forget if you could like subscribe to this page it's really going to help me out so i would appreciate that and then you'll get a first look at all the videos as they come in so thanks very much and i will catch you very soon